Welcome back to week four and in video three we are going to talk about Google Earth and specifically in Google Earth um, it's free you can go to the uh, website and download free software it's pretty big so if your computer doesn't have a lot of room on it you uh, might not want to download this but any computer on campus um, if it doesn't have it installed already you can download and install it. It doesn't take very long. It's a pretty quick process. Um, you might have to do it every time you use that computer because they get wiped every night. <coughs> so um, what this is is basically it's a compiled satellite images. Um, some areas you can have past images available, sometimes not. Um, you can use measuring tools, change units, check out relief, um, and you can download various files for Google Earth, they're called KMZ files. That's uh, the kind of name of the file. Like if you were to use a Word file, it's DOC or DOCX. Um, and a lot of those are, are available online to download. In this course, uh, in the next couple of weeks, when we start to talk about groundwater, streams, glaciers, um, we're going to be using Google Earth. And I have files that I have made that you're going to download and open on um, the computer that you use. So what are we going to look at? Well, I'm going to talk about how to change units, how to, uh, if you can't see the latitude, longitude toolbar or elevation toolbar, I'll show you how to make that visible. How do you use place marks, measure distances, elevations, and look at historical images. So when you open Google Earth up, um, eventually you'll get to a screen that looks like this. Some of it is cut off a little bit here. Um, if I move it around, you can see what the other half looks like. Um, but the important stuff I want to talk about here, uh, most of it is visible to you right now. You can also open this and play around with it if you'd like. So some of the things that I wanted to show you, um, so right now you can see this top toolbar, you can see this bottom toolbar, you can see the latitude and longitude change as I move around. Um, if you can't see those, if you go up to view, if you click on toolbar, you'll see oh, that top one went away, so make sure that's clicked sidebar, so that sidebar that I had visible, you want to definitely have that when we're using different place marks. Um, status bar, that's that bottom part. See, it just went away. Let's make sure the status bar is checked so you can see it. Let's say you want to change from degree minute seconds into something else. Well, let's go to properties. properties here. Um, this has to do with the folder that you're in. So uh, if you want to change the name of the file that I made for you, you can do that. Um, you can make your own file. You can add different things here. Uh, if we go to tools and options, uh, we open up this window here that shows you a variety of different things. So we've got texture colors, filters, labels, fonts, units, lat long. Um, so if you want to change this to dec decimal degrees, you just click decimal degrees. If you want to use UTM, you can do that. If you want to do degrees decimal minutes, you can do that too. Um, so you can kind of move this around and check different boxes. And then units of measurement, you can click on feet miles, meters, kilometers, or just leave it at system default. And then hit apply and or OK and it will go away. So that's how you change your units down here. You can um, use whatever you'd like, um, but I would stick with latitude, longitude in some form or the other. So place marks. Let's say um, you want to locate Hood River. And let's see, I've searched for it before. If I hit search, it will eventually zoom in and bring me there. Of course it's being a little slow. Um, here we go. And it will zoom in to a Hood River. You can see I already have a place mark for our campus, but let's say I want to put a place mark down here at the, at the hook or the spit. There's this little thumbtack feature. You click on that and you see a little place mark has popped up. You can move it around, create a new name for it. Um, and then whatever setting you have, whatever you're zoomed into, um, 
is going to be what's saved with that place mark. And if you want to change it, you can always go back in and edit later. But um, this is kind of a tool for you to use if you'd like. You don't have to. Um, we're not going to require you to use them. But I, I am going to be using them. So if you, let's say, um, we're in the Streams and Groundwater Lab, and I want to take a look at what I have for the Arecibo Observatory. You double click on that location and it will zoom us to that observatory which is pretty cool and what's popped up which is convenient is this scale um, time scale bar so say that isn't there um, and I want to see repeat photography for this observatory well down here we've got two things you can click you can click the number to see historical imagery or you can click this uh, clock with the green arrow and that will pop you up with this scale bar that shows you in these lighter blue lines what time we have these images and as you scroll backwards you can see various times when we have pictures for this area and you can see way back here in 93 it's black and white and that can happen sometimes with your images and more recently we can see we have some color pictures as well and sometimes this is helpful if you're looking at features that have changed recently sometimes we go back later than 93 sometimes not just depends on the area that you're looking at uh, let's kind of move this over a little bit here now let's say I want to figure out okay what's the diameter of this huge dish well up at the top here you can see there's this little ruler feature if I click on the ruler feature this will pop up and what we can do is we can change it. I want to know how many um, feet across this is. And here's my, I can go one side, the other side, and it tells me it is 956 feet. So what do you, these two features here, map length and ground length, what this is doing is the map length is as the bird flies, or as the crow flies, from one side to the other ground length is how far it is if you were to lay a string down on the surface of the earth Now, because this is a depression it's going to be a little bit longer than the, as the crow flies it's kind of neat let's say I want to do a path instead and I want to go if I clear this I want to go from the observatory and then around this whole entire dish so I just click different spots around this dish and it will add those points together for me and tell me how many feet it is. You can change it to miles if you'd like. So that's doing a line versus a path for distance and you guys are going to use that in lab this week. The next thing you want to do is how do I figure out the elevation? Well as I s move this mouse around you see the numbers on the bottom here changing and one of them is feet and that is your elevation of various features you're trying to get um, a point pretty detailed you want to zoom in much closer to get that um, detail so that's Google Earth and I'm gonna X out of that that's how you do many of those features. If you look at the Google Earth Learn site that I've posted on Moodle, you can also find out how to do lots of other things. So that's it for Google Earth. I will um, see you in the next video.